Hello YouTube, we're back again with another Jeff doing stuff how-to video. Today I'm going to be constructing a litter box. <clears throat> I'm getting all choked up about it because, uh, you know, I couldn't believe the prices that are being charged for litter boxes uh, in pet stores, on Amazon, $60, $80 for pieces of plastic that you don't really are, you're not getting much more than what these uh, Starlight bins can offer. I got these at uh, Canadian Tire, I'm in Canada, but you know, obviously anywhere you can get bins at your local construction store. I think I paid $10 for these, $9.97 each. So we're looking at 20 bucks total for these two bins. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to use and how I'm going to do this. There are several how-to videos online. I don't the cat's here to, to join us. Uh, several how-to videos online about making these. And I watched a couple of them. I had to watch three or four of them to really get the idea of what, it, what I should be doing. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a video just compiling the information I got. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing for you today. I've already created a bit of a template for the door. And I've used the marker, obviously, to mark that off. And now I'm just cutting it with a utility blade. And uh, I've found that just scoring it, whoops, scoring it uh, ever so lightly at first to get your line. And then just going back over it. All right, you can see now that I've cut the cat door out of this container. Uh, I'm going to go in with some sandpaper and just make sure those edges, they aren't sharp, uh, but just to clean them up a little bit. And uh, the next stage is to create the tray. Now the tray is going to be about this deep, so obviously I'm going to have to measure to make sure that the tray doesn't stick up past the door. For now, I'm going to measure and figure out how high to put this to create this line. So right now we are four and a half inches from the bottom. And uh, if I'm going to put, say, an inch space, that'll put me at five and a half. So to be safe, if I create a line that's uh, five inches, um, maybe we even go four and a half, then that puts the line about here. That would be pretty good. Then it won't get in the way. Okay, let's do that. So we're going to go four and a half inches from the bottom here around the entire container, and then I will cut that. So we'll be back. Okay, what I did was measure 11 and a half centimeters, or you can see about four and a half inches, it's pretty much the same. From the bottom of the table up, you can see there, four and a half inches. It's hard to measure from a curve, right? I, at first I was trying to mi monkey around with it, measuring from the curve here, but it's, it's not as easy. So you put it flat on the table, and then you measure up from the table, you get a consistent measurement. So I measured there and then here and marked it. And I did that all the way around. You see, marked it, marked it here, marked it here, 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 and all the way around. And then I just found something sturdy and straight and I lined it up and drew my line with my marker. Now I feel pretty confident with my ability to draw a straight line even though when you get to this part here, for example, you can see that uh, when you line up your straight edge, you've got gaps. There's a gap here, you've got gaps here, gap over here. So when you're drawing your line, you've got to make sure you're putting, pointing straight down or you're not going to get a straight line. If you're not confident with your ability to, to navigate those gaps, then what you could do is just get some masking tape and you could run the masking tape around the perimeter of the container along those marks. <clears throat> and then you'd have a straight line 
to cut. All right, so now you can see I've created the tray. It wasn't too hard, just take my time. Use the X-Acto blade, as we call it, or the utility knife. What I ended up grabbing were these plastic lids. They go on these containers, which I have a whole bunch of them. I got them from glue that I buy at the dollar store. There's crazy glue. They come in little tubes and they come in these plastic containers and they have these lids and I have a bunch of them. So I'm using the lids as spacers and you can see that when I put the box now on top, it fits in. Uh, seems to be, it's snug enough now that when I lift the whole thing, it all sticks together with a bit of a suction going on there. The other option is to use these golf balls, for example. And they just sit right in the corners. Uh, and then when I put this on top, you can see that it's still, it sticks up a bit higher, uh, but there's no suction there. They're high enough that it's easily, it's very easy to take this out of the top. This will just fall off, which I don't know yet if that's good or not, like I said. So we'll have to experiment. But what I am suggesting is you want to use something like a golf ball or a plastic lid, something that's washable. I did see some people on their videos using pieces of wood and I thought, no, that's not a good idea because wood can absorb urine and other liquids and then obviously bacteria and smells. So by using plastic or something like a golf ball as a spacer, you're not going to have to deal with the bacteria and smells because you can wash it. Uh, by the way, I want to talk about the type of bin that you want to buy. You can see that this type of plastic is very malleable, it's soft. It's not going to snap on you or, or crack when you're doing that. I noticed that some people were using clear plastic bins when they were making their litter boxes. And the kind of plastic that they use for the clear plastic bins is much more brittle, in, uh, at least in my experience. So if you are hoping to use a clear plastic bin, then I would just make sure you take extra precautions to make sure that the plastic doesn't split or crack. You can do that with masking tape, I think, um, and maybe making sure that the plastic is warm. If you are doing this, I think that's a good idea at any rate. If you've got your bin stored outside and you're in a colder climate like we are here in Toronto, make sure you bring your bins inside and let them warm up to the room temperature before you start cutting. That'll make the cutting easier and it'll make it less likely to crack. Okay, so now we've got our tray all cut out and we've got our door all cut out. I did take some sandpaper and I went around the inside edge of the opening. It did make a bit of difference, it dulled the edges. It wasn't that sharp to begin with, to begin with that, quite honestly. Uh, but I did it anyway just to make sure that none of the cat's fur got caught on anything. Uh, I'm not going to bother doing it on the edge. You can see I'm running my hand around it. It's not sharp. It worked out fine. I'm not going to waste time sanding those edges. But you could if you wanted to. And uh, I used a 180 grit sandpaper. Seemed to work just fine. So now the next step is to drill holes in the bottom of this container. We are using, we're going to go with the wood pellet cat litter concept. There are lots of videos about why this is beneficial. I think it makes sense, especially given the cost. I was able to buy a 40 pound bag of these wood pellets. Here, zoom in here, Robert. A 40 pound bag of these wood pellets and it's 100% pure wood. There's no chemicals, nothing's added to it. Uh, they take sawdust and they create these pellets. 40 pound bag was $7.50 from Canadian Tire. That's in Canadian money. 
It's probably cheaper in the States even. Oops, throwing it all over the place here. So a 40 pound bag for 750 is much cheaper than the gravel or clay kitty litter that you're gonna buy. Now the idea is behind the wood pellets is when the cat pees, and I've seen this happen, we've been using these in a different litter box that we have, the cat pees and the wood pellets turn to sawdust with no smell. The wood absorbs the smell. So then by creating the holes in the bottom of this pan, that will give the, you can hear my dog and cat running around in the background. Uh, by cutting holes in the bottom of this, by drilling holes in the bottom of this pan, we will allow the sawdust to sift through into the catching tray. Uh, the reason I'm using a lid, by the way, is because I do have a dog. The dog likes to get in and sniff around the cat's litter box, and so by creating this with a lid, we have a secure and private space for the cat. So because these pellets are about a quarter inch thick, they're actually a little, yeah, pretty much a quarter inch thick, uh, I'm using quarter inch holes. They're not circular, uh, well, they're spherical, so there's a very slim chance that they'll fall through the quarter inch hole. Even if they do, uh, we're not going to lose a lot of them. But I want the holes to be big enough so that it's not too hard to get the sawdust through. And I'm not going to be too careful about where I put these holes. We're just going to go through. Oops, there we go. Get it going. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty effective. I'm just going to go along, drill some holes. Now, you know what? Because I'm making a video, and you might be curious, let's see how this drill bit does. It's very soft, the plastic, so I don't think it's going to be much of a difference. This is going better, actually. It's making cleaner holes. So we're going to continue. It's actually much easier. So I was wrong. I thought this bit was going to do a better job. This bit is doing the better job. So we're going to continue with this drill bit. I'm going to finish drilling holes and uh, come back. All right, so done with the drilling. It did create a bit of a mess, so we had to vacuum up and clean up, but uh, here are our holes. Now, I did have my son Robert help, and so that's why you're looking at perhaps uh, some random patterns and designs in here. Normally, when you get two people doing a job, a repetitive job like that, you end up with uh, a different look. Anyway, we had fun doing it point is there are holes. I don't know if you can see me. Here I am. I've put the spacers in and so now this sits down and uh, we've created our litter box. The lid goes on, locks in. So for what did we spend on this? Ten dollars per bin plus tools. I'm assuming you have the tools already. And uh, I think we've got a pretty good solution to the litter box. We're going to put the wood pellets in and then uh, my intention is to shake it around like that when the cat goes. Obviously when number one happens we got to scoop that out, open it up, scoop it out. Bottom tray needs to be emptied. It should be pretty easy to just lift out the top. And uh, now our spacers have moved because I shook it around. What that means is I may end up having to glue them in or... I don't know, I'm not gonna glue the spacers in because I want to be able to take them out to clean them. So we need to find a solution to keep them from moving around. Maybe we don't. Maybe they'll be fine. Either way, 
we've got our space to collect the sawdust. That's going to sit right on top. Cat's going to go in and do his business. Quick and easy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye, YouTube.